Howdy right, folks, Hulk Rex here, and welcome to episode 65 from Thoughts from the Inner Sphere. And today we're going to be talking about that Orion, that 75 ton. And those of you that know the clans or know any bit of history about the Inner Sphere, it was Alexander Kerensky's personal mech that he took into battle, and which he took with him into the periphery and disappeared, never to be heard again. Or did they? Hmm. Something for maybe later. Alright. The Orion. A very useful little mech here. Alright, like I said, it's 75 tons. It's a 460, so it doesn't have jump jets, so it has some uh, problems once in a while with mobility. Uh, 10 heat sinks, which I think is its major problem most of the time. Then we get into weapons. Well, actually, it's got 230, 224 points of armor. Get that out. Jeez. Stuck. All right. Weapons. Carries an AC-10 in the right torso with two tons of ammo. An LRM-15 in the left torso with two tons of, or, yeah, two tons of ammo. And then we have a medium laser in the left and right arm and in the left torso. Or in some cases it say the left arm. You know, depending on how you want to... It's like sometimes you see it in the left torso, sometimes you see it in the left arm. So it's like, eh, whatever. And it carries one ton of ammo. Now, what do I like about this man? Well, it's a great mech. It's kind of a mech that can get a lot of different things done. Uh, it can do fire support, direct fire support. Uh, it can do pretty decently in the assault, uh, supporting some heavier mechs. Uh, it's not as, per se, as iconic as, I say, a Marauder like you always see in the, back in the day. But Orion was one of those mechs way back before we started seeing a lot of the different mechs show up was something that we always played with and used in the games quite a bit. And typically it was like, yeah, we could sit back with that AC-10 and that LRM-15 and rain down on somebody and uh, fill them full of holes before you get in close. And then start uh, getting into the kicking range. Because obviously when this mech is in close, you're not going to be punching because that's where your two medium lasers and I'd rather use the two medium lasers than to give somebody a swift kick in the, uh, the backside. Now, like I said, one of the biggest problems with this mech, though, was the heat sinks with the standard version with the K. And with those 10, it wasn't a problem with the long range weapons, right? You can fire the LRM and the AC 10 without any deprimant. You know, you could even run. It's still about worry about heat, you know, because that adds up to 10. It's when you get in close with this mech, and then you're tempted to fire the AC-10, the two medium lasers, and obviously you're going to throw the SR-4 into the, the mix. And that adds up to 12 feet, and then if you walk, that's 13. If you run, that's 14. So you're going up four. So you can do that for one turn. But the next turn, you're going to have to shut something off. And typically, most people are going to not fire either a medium laser or a uh, SRM-4. But you're still, if you walk, you're going to go up one more. That puts you at the old 5 mark. And then suddenly you're at the minus 1 movement modifier. So... A lot of times you're going to be forced to either not fire two of those weapons, fire two, kind of cool off, then do the same thing again. Try to uh, do a little uh, fire down range again type of deal or just get into a scrum melee. And quite a few times this mech, by that point, it's going toe to toe. And if typically if I'm seeing this mech coming down at me and I was like, well, he's getting close enough, he's probably going to try to kick. We a lot of times will focus fire on uh, a mech like this, 
focus it down with everything you have on your side and just take it down or try to dock it to the ground and if that's the case then you're going to force it to burn movement points just to stand up and hopefully you, you know you knocked a bunch of armor off now the other detriment in this thing is that it's carrying a lot of uh um either ballistic or you know missiles and you got ammo everywhere in this thing so you got five places where you can hit with ammo and the standard version other than the missile launcher and the auto cannon taking up space your choice is hit one of those or ammo and a lot of times what I've found with this mech myself personally being on the receiving end of it is uh, going kaboom and watching your ammo go off so really that's the the biggest two things with this back that you'll be finding uh, most of the time is ammo and heat but if you plan on staying back a ways and just working until you unload that entire ammo bay you, know, you can go 20 turns with the auto cannon and uh, 16 turns with it with the uh, the missile launcher before the uh, the bays are empty and if you go that long and you survive that long, obviously you're going to get up and close and personal and uh, start giving some people uh, uh, a little bit of uh, foot and uh, try and lock off some legs and stuff like that. Because if you can knock somebody's leg off, heck, they're on the ground and you can curb stomp them. Now, there is a few variants. Uh, okay, we got the Orion... F um, Five sports a, another short range uh, missile pack SRM4 and what they did was uh, basically took off armor to do that so you still have the same thing where you're looking at a mech that has even less armor and still has the heat problem so if you fire all your short range stuff you're yeah you for one turn you're gonna be doing an extra match the same problem you had with the uh, the standard version but add three more heat to that mix suddenly you're up seven on heat scale right off the bat and when you're up at seven and you still got the minus the minus, yeah, the minus to your movement modifier you do that a couple turns and the next thing you know you're having minuses to hit and your movement's really down in the tanks so I can the only way I'd ever see myself doing that is if I am like one or two points left in my center torso and all it takes is one hit and I'm gone I might consider unloading with everything I got two turns in a row just trying to do as much damage before they drag me down but that's a, usually in a rarer case. You know, you, I've done it before because you know it's like, oh, they're going to just put one more. All it takes is one small laser into me and I'm done. And there's a whole bunch of guys are all pointing at me. I'm going to take somebody with me type attitude. Usually doesn't work, but, you know, it's what, you know, your mentality at the time is like, I'm going to spit in your eye. Now, another version, which is the 5A drops the LRM in for favor of the second LRM or SRM system so you're getting rid of the uh, LRM 15 but you still have the uh, AC 10 for your long range you know that little shorter range than the LRM but you're replacing it with an SRM 4 so you got still have two of them but you no longer have that um, uh, LRM 15, but they turn around. I think it has 16 heat sinks on that thing. And with that one, uh, you're doing a little bit better. So you can go toe to toe, get into people's face. It's more of a brawler because they max out the armor on it, put another eight points of armor on it. So it's maxed out armor. Then it also uh, has all that short range stuff. So it can get in there and. Uh, Try a knife fight. 
So plain and simple, that's what it tries to do. So, yeah, that's what you're you're looking at when it comes to the uh, Orion. Like I said, one of the things I like to do with this mech is uh, initially, I like to find myself if I can let's say you're playing the hex map, find myself where there's a love or uh, heavy woods uh, someplace and park myself in it. So you're getting the same modifier as if I had to run five. But I'm sitting there without any movement modifiers myself, parked in some heavy woods, so I'm getting some decent cover that way. And then I'm just laying out LRM fire, or AC-10 fire, and then dishing it out until they either come to me, or I'm running out of ammo with that uh, launcher. And then I'm, so by that time it's okay, either you're close to me, and you're going to get the short range stuff or I'm already out of that uh, ammo and so I'm just going to go up and uh, start using nothing but my short range stuff and then get into a kicking match and pretty much is just get right into their face and try to bulldoze them over and by that time that's the hardest part about really in the game is that once you get in that part of the game when you're engaged with somebody it's hard to uh, disengage yourself from it but it's one of these mechs like this can lock somebody down because they do not want to turn their back because later in the game most mechs have a lot of armor missing and they don't want to disengage and, and uh, expose themselves too much unless uh, you have more armor on your back than you have on your front then heck uh, there's nothing wrong with uh, turning your back toward, towards them so at least using a little bit of that armor you have left and then do a torso twist and shooting down the line or something of that nature to uh, bring one of your weapons to bear that way so it'd be like an SRM and a medium laser out of one of the arms if you still got that arm now uh, since it is a 4.6 it has a tendency to well, it's not really a problem when it's if you're facing other heavies or other mechs that are four sixes or three fives. Uh, you're pretty much all comparable when it comes to that. So, trying to get into someone's flank or someone trying to flank you, you can react about the same speed that they're doing stuff. So it's like they're telegraphing what they're trying to do. Now, the only problem you're going to have with this mech is if you got facing some five eight movers or six nines, let's say Phoenix Hawks or something of that nature, which are pretty awesome little mechs for great for flanking maneuvers and getting into somebody's flank it's like say you hit somebody like I've always said you hit somebody you rip a bunch of armor off from one flank and they're seeing like a right side or a left side it's tore to heck uh, try to flood your fast movers into that uh, let's say it's all on the right side it's missing try to flood your fast movers into the right side which will force them to either try to turn more protect that flank or they're going to be taking a lot of hits right down you know it's be funneling right down into center torso and uh, or hitting ammo or whatever it may be because there's no armor left so is then you're starting to control the situation on the board and if you can roll up uh, individuals on the flanks that way then you are in control and you're forcing them to play your game the way you want it and then the end result is, you know, you're going to win. And they'll go down a lot faster because, let me tell you, one good shot into somebody's flank and hitting an ammo, that's one less mech you have to worry about. And that's pretty quick, immediately. And then you just move on to the next one. And, and it's like a force multiplier. Every time you take one of theirs out and they have one less than you, and you do that several turns in a row, and it's pretty soon it's either they're surrendering, conceding, or you just rip them to pieces and they're trying to take as much of you with them as possible. So that's pretty much everything that's going on here in the command bunker, and that's what we have with the Orion. Uh, we're getting pretty close down here to the end of this book. we got a few more left. And uh, the only problem I've had, you know, if you've been with me this long, is that I cannot find a mech. I had the mech. It was my hostel. Can't find it. 
I had no idea where it got off to. It's disappeared on me. It's not a mech I use very often to begin with, and I can't find it, so I don't have a picture of it or anything. So, if anybody has one and they want to share it and they want it to be put on my video, let me know. Let's see if we can share something like that. All right, this is Hellcrex, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you later.